brought me out of darkness. You have filled me with peace. Giver of mercy, you're my help.
promises are yes in Praise God. Isn't God faithful? Come on now. Man, as we're singing this song, the, the thing that kept coming through my mind is he's faithful never to leave us or forsake us. Even when we leave him, he's still pursuing us. Amen. Even when we don't have any uh, idea that he's around us and we're so consumed with the things of what's going on in our life, he's right there, never leaving us or forsaking us because he's faithful. Amen. All right, you can be seated just for a quick second um, before we pray over these cards. Uh, I just want to say hello to all our first-time guests. If this is your first time here, I'm excited that you're here. I'm so happy that you're here and uh, pray that you felt welcome in this house. We got a couple things uh, for you. Um, if you are new here, you can use your phone here at Life in Christ Church. We have no problem with that. And we have something that we would like you to text if you would. If you would just text welcome to that number on the back of the screen there, um, you're going to receive another text. And if you could just fill that information out, we want to just kind of say hello and uh, maybe just introduce ourselves to you beyond our worship service. Also, if you, you don't have access to a phone, we have a, a card in the back of the seats. Uh, it's called a connection uh, card. If you could just fill that out and take that back to the connection center, which is in the atrium area. And I think we're going to have a picture of that, but most people know where that's at. And uh, also, if you're new here, this is your first time here, or maybe this is a, maybe a second or third time or whatever, and you have not uh, had an opportunity to say hello to myself and my wife. Today I'm flying solo, uh, but uh, I will be back in the atrium area after service. And I would just invite you uh, after service, if you would, just come find me. I'm in the atrium area. Just say hello. Tell me your story. Tell me how you found out about life in Christ Church and how we can serve you as a church family. Uh, just really love that. And also, if uh, you are a member of this church or a part of this church in any way, uh, and you have not yet um, text connect to that number right there and receive the text from us this is we're just trying to populate uh, a, a new system and so if you would jump on your phone text that and the, the important thing here is is after you text that and you get the text back the, if you would hit that link and then fill out that information um, that would be really helpful to us and then also I want to say from the bottom of my heart, I want to say thank you to everybody that continues to undergird this ministry financially. You know, and, and because we can't do what we do without some financial undergirding. And uh, just, I, I'm so thankful that we, we are part of a generous church that gets it, that understands that the church doesn't want your money, but God wants your heart. And he has a plan and a purpose behind our giving. And that's so more people can encounter the presence of God in this place. And wherever we're going, uh, that, that God would just, we wouldn't have to be fearful of, uh, are the bills being paid around here? Because they are, because we have generous givers. So again, um, I want to say thank you to all of you that give. Um, also, if you haven't get, given in this church or you want to, uh, number one, I want to encourage you to give because I believe you'll be, you'll be blessed by it. Uh, but at the end of the service, uh, we have buckets in the back. There's envelopes on the back of your seat. Just want to encourage you to, to participate in what God is participating in. He is all about the local church. And when you bless the local church, you're blessing God. You're blessing yourself. Amen. And then we got all kinds of ways to give. You can give by text. You can give online. All those things. And um, one of the easiest things for me to do is just, I just have it on automatic giving. So every week it just comes out. And I know sometimes that isn't conducive to some people because they don't know what they're going to make week to week. But sometimes it just takes a step of faith and just say, I'm going to give this much. And it, if it looks like I'm making more that month, just add something else to it. Uh, but just be faithful. God's faithful, so let's be faithful to God. Amen? Amen. All right, let's pray over these cards. Father, we just uh, lift up the cards that came in this week. Uh, Dinah, she was in for a stress test. I already talked to her, and she said it went real well. She's got some other things going on. But, God, we just speak health and healing over her right now. Uh, and, Lord, we just pray that, God, if there is anything that, that uh, is attacking her body uh, from divine health and healing, Lord, God, that you would just push that out of her. And, Lord, Lord, we just speak health and healing. We got a, a, a mom that's concerned about her son that's being deployed. And... Um, just praying that God would speak 
uh, to her son as he's deployed, uh, praying for household salvation and understanding of God's love for him and his, his family and a hunger for God's word. That's awesome. Another person is praying for a young person that had been in a car accident, still in the hospital in a coma. And I don't have a report on that. There's no number here. But Father God, we lift up uh, this, this person to you and we ask that divine health and healing would come to them. And God, that they would wake up from that, uh, that coma and, and God, that you would speak to them even now. And that God, if they're not saved, that they would come to know you. They'd, they'd come to know your son, Jesus, and be born again. And then there's a card. I like this. Some, somebody put a card in. Pray for, pray for pastor. So I got this, and I prayed for myself. <laughs> I'm like, all right, let's, let's pray for me. Praise God. So, Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for, Lord, not only hearing our prayers, but also answering them. And, God, we yield our will to your will. And, God, we thank you that you are good and your mercy endures forever. And you have only good for us. And God, even when we don't understand and we don't know what's going on, God, you know what's going on and we trust you. And Father God, we pray for just freedom from any bondage that anybody in this church is, is um, dealing with. Father God, we pray that your blessing, your anointing in the middle of trouble when they're facing hard times. And Father God, we pray for wisdom for our future. Lord, we pray for every church in this community. Father God, every church in Owasso, in Shiawassee County. God, we pray as they come together that, God, they would encounter you. And, God, that you would send revival into this city and in this county. God, may we be the church that you so desire, one without spot or wrinkle, one that understands that we're all on the same team. And, God, we pray for your blessing, your anointing in this house. God, that you would increase our influence. God, your presence would be known in this place. Father, God, that you would protect us. God, that you would help us to sin not, that we would not cause harm to other people. Lord, that you would lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. And God, we pray for your wisdom, guidance, and protection in favor as we move forward in our lives and as a church family. And God, we just give you all the glory, all the praise. We love you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Everybody, let's stand to our feet as we worship. Yeah, yeah. Your goodness is running. 
running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Everybody, how we all doing? God is good, amen. Man, Nate, I just got to tell you, I just every time I see your family, I'm like, man, you are so blessed. You got just got the most beautiful family. It's like if there's like an Americana family, it's like that's the photo I see right there. Man, praise God. I love, I love Nate and Casey and family. So awesome. Y'all look good this morning. I hope I look half as good as you. If that's the case, then we're good. Amen. Uh, I want to say thank you for letting me um, just kind of check out last weekend. I got a chance to get away, uh, rest a little bit. I went to a pastor's conference, and we were just so blessed by that. I um, hope you enjoyed the video that we selected for you guys. I think it was just kind of like the little cherry on top of the Sunday, no pun intended. Um, uh, but I just felt like I used some of those one-liners that he preached, and maybe some of you caught those things, but uh, I just really think that Robert Morris is one of the most solid preachers of our time. And, and so um, obviously people that were online got to see, see me, uh, you know, a rerun of something. I, I picked out two of them. I can't, they don't even remember what, which one they chose, but uh, um, thank you again for letting me get away and just understanding and uh, Hopefully you enjoyed that video and got something from it. I hope that you came expecting to hear God's voice. Because that's really important. It really, really important. We're going to see how important that is here in a minute. Uh, but um, on Father's Day, I talk about what is a man. And uh, this morning what we're going to do is we're going to talk about what is a woman. Um, because here's the thing. People know the difference between a snowman and a snowwoman. They know the difference between a male cardinal and a female cardinal and all kinds of different species but when it comes to the human species all of a sudden now we got all these different genders and i'm like going something is really out of place and not matching up at least in my heart and my mind and um i want to start off by reading 
a funny story. I hope you all think it's as funny as I think it is, okay? I'm not even going to read it. I'm just going to tell you. Uh, there was this man, um, he realized that women were having a hard time finding a good husband. And he thought, you know what? I think I'm going to solve this issue. I'm going to go to New York, and I'm going to open up the husband store. <laughs> so he goes, to, he goes to New York. He buys this big building. It's got six floors. And he says, now there's going to be some rules here. Uh, if a woman is looking for a husband, the rules are there's six floors, and you can visit any floor you want, but once you, once you go up, you can't go back down, okay? And uh, one lady thought, you know what, I'm going to go check out this husband store, I can't find me a good man, I'm going to go to this store, I'm going to find me a husband. And she walks into the, 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 the first floor, and, the, and there's a big sign that says, um, it says, these men have good jobs and she goes wow that's already a good start because most of the guys I meet don't have a full-time job they're just just kind of skating by I mean it's a good thing you know uh, so she thought that was good but she was like but I think we can do better right and so she goes up to the next floor and there's this sign that says these men have jobs they have jobs um, but and they love kids and she goes, oh this is getting better they love kids this is great um, this is getting better and better. So she did, but she decides, let's check out the third floor. So she goes up to the third floor, and it, it, there's a sign that says, "These men have job. They love kids, and they're extremely good looking." And she's going, "All right, now we're talking, <laughs> right? Now we're talking. Now we're talking." And she thought, "This is great, but I got to see what's on the fourth floor." So she moves up to the fourth floor, and immediately she's met with a sign that says, "These men have have great jobs. They love kids." They're extremely good looking, and they enjoy doing housework. And she goes, oh, my gosh, this is heaven. <laughs> this is heaven. And something in her, in her heart says, I think I need to stop, but I, I got to go to the next floor. She goes to the next floor, and she's met with this sign. It says, these men have jobs. They love kids. They're extremely good looking. They, they enjoy doing housework, and they have this extremely long and extensive romantic streak to them. And she's going, I'm in heaven. This is awesome. I couldn't ask for anything more. But you know what? I got to find out what's on floor number six. And so she heads up to floor number six. And she's met with a sign that says, you are the 31,554,014th woman that comes up, came up here. And I want to tell you, there's no men up here. This is just a scientific experience that sometimes you can't please most women. Now, to be fair, this man also decided he would start a wife store across the street. He says, this is working, this experiment's working out so good, let's, let's start a man store. So he starts the man store, same thing applies. You come in, first floor, got six floors, man, you, but once you go leave one floor and go to the next, you cannot go back down. Okay, got it? Rules? Okay, a man walks into the store. He goes, I'm in looking for a woman, you know, wife. And um, he, he goes into this store. And um, the first thing that he sees, uh, these women have money. He's going, all right. Sugar mama. Okay? Right? He's thinking, this is great. But I, I, know, I know we could do better. Let's go up to the next floor. So he gets in the elevator, goes up to the next floor. He's met with a sign that says, these women have money, and they never say no to sex. He's going, all right. And from this day, four, floor three through six has never been visited. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just I, I shared that story. <laughs> I shared that story to tell you there's a difference between a man and a woman. Let's pray. <laughs> Lord, we thank you so much. Woo. Thank you so much for a loving church. So let's, let's me get away with some of this stuff. Lord, we give you all the glory and praise. And we thank you that, God, that you'll speak to us even as we look upon your word today. And, Lord, we just pray that revelation knowledge would flow in, in our hearts and in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, to me, it's obviously that there's a difference between men and women. And it's amazing how politicized this conversation really has become. Like, I, it, when I was growing up, I never thought that we would have to explain what a woman is or what a man is. And, and men and women are different biologically, right? S uh, you know, s psychologically. And the way men think are totally different than the way women think. Uh, scientific 
you know, will we'll reveal that men are thinking on one side of the brain, the women are thinking on both. I don't know why that is. I think it's unfair. I mean, women can, like, guys are kind of tunnel vision. They can think on one thing, but don't get me too, you know, wrapped up. Women can, I mean, they can be talking on the phone, cooking meal, and know what all the kids are doing in each room and know where their husband's at. They just, and even if they don't know, they got this, like, this psyche thing that just, you know, it's like a spider psyche. Like, they just know what's going on. Right? They just know what's going on. And so men are thinking on one side of the brain. Women are thinking on both sides of the brain. There's a difference. And uh, today I want to address the question that many people in our political arena, if you've ever watched news and watched our political people and the judges, and, and yeah, what is a woman? And a judge this there going, well, I don't know. And, and it's just like, are you kidding me? It's just like crazy. Education is like trying to, trying to answer that question. And I've watched some things and you know, professors that can't even just tell you what a man or a woman is and they got, got like it's like a dust screen you don't know what they're saying because they're just all over the place and even in the sporting world they don't know what a man or a woman is and now we got men competing with girls and all this other stuff and it's just crazy to think about and so today I want to answer the question what is a woman what is a woman and uh, I think that the interesting thing as uh, you look at science that God assigned our gender at conception for example this, this picture I want to show you right here, um, this is a picture of an ultrasound of a baby at six, seven weeks. Isn't that amazing? Not only showed part of it, okay, but it's pretty detailed, isn't it? I mean, you can see at seven weeks, a baby has toes. And they have other features and stuff, but that was enough to show that that's an ultrasound of a baby at seven, seven weeks. And um, that is much different than what we had. How many um, had a baby 20, 15, 20 years ago or longer? then you probably remember something like this. This is what we got. Like, what is that? What is, oh, that's the head. And, oh, can you see it? Uh, no, I can't see. I, I have no idea what you're showing me there, honey. I mean, because my, my wife comes, look at our baby. Like, <laughs> looks like a sci-fi movie. I don't know what that is. Right? And now we, now, now listen, now we have microscopic photographs like this. Now, this is not hair follicles. <laughs> and anybody in eighth grade or beyond are probably already laughing. Oh, that's an egg and a sperm. <laughs> yeah, that's an egg and a sperm. And an egg, if we're going to go to the science, because some people say, follow the science. So we're going to follow the science and let you know that even science can prove that there's an egg and a sperm. And we all know that eggs are always X chromosome. And the men get to determine... Actually, if we have a boy or a girl, because the men and their sperm are carrying X and Y chromosome, and whoever wins the prize, that's what you get. So all these little sperm things are going on, and, you know, whatever, if the Y one beats the X one, then you're going to have a girl and boy, you know what I'm saying, okay? And so um, the thing that God created at conception was gender. At conception, even before a heartbeat. Your gender is already established by God. The moment of conception, you are either a man with a Y chromosome or a woman with an X chromosome. And isn't it ironic that that's the very thing that the enemy is trying to attack? The spirits of darkness are trying to attack our identity, our God-given identity. Now, so today, beyond the scientific, the scientific research because everybody's saying go to the science, I want to give you three things that, out of God's word um, that I pray that will help every woman uh, view themselves the way God sees them. And the first thing that I want you to know that God created you as a woman to be a helper. A woman was designed to be a helper. And this is where some ladies begin to push back because they believe that they can do anything a man can do. Let me just be real, y'all like me teaching the truth, right, and not sugarcoat some stuff. You can't do everything a man can do. Okay, all right, so since we're, we're in the eighth grade mode, you can't produce sperm, okay? <laughs> you, you can't, unless you get some other changes that some, you know, mad scientist wants to give you, but you were, God never created you with that, Okay. Can, 
can we agree on some things that we're men and women are different? Okay? So, so listen, here's the thing. You know, to be upset, well, I can do what man can. And I understand that there are some wimpy guys and you might be able to beat the snot out of them. But for the most part, you can't do what a man can do. For example, just look at the world record in bench pressing. Men could just, now, not, I mean, there's some really strong women. But ultimately, men, if you look at the record books, the, the world record for a man's be- bench press is twice as much as the, as the strongest woman. Now, that strongest woman probably can beat the snot out of me. But I'm trying to make a point here, okay? And, and so, so there are some things that a woman can't do that a man can do. And a, but, but I want you to understand that there are things that women can do that a man can't do. Are you following me? And when God created you, he created you for a unique role. And, and we see this in, in the story of creation when everything God created was good. But then look at what it says in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 18. It says this. Then the Lord God said, it is not good. Not good for what? For man to be alone. I will make a helper who will just uh, who is just right for him. And usually this is, again, where, where more women get mad and upset. I'm not anybody's helper, blah, blah, blah. Because, listen, they don't understand that women were created to be like God. Because if they realized that they were created to be like God, they wouldn't have a problem with it. For example, look what King David says in Psalms 54 in verse 1. Look at this. Behold, God is my helper. If you look in the Hebrew, you know what helper means? It means strength. It means the attributes and quality of God. So when God created a woman, he created in in them the attributes of his character. Man, you need some help. I'm going to create a helper that's just like me with the same qualities as me. How many are glad that God is your helper? When you don't know what to do, that God swoops in by way of the Holy Spirit and helps you and reveals things to you and strengthens you and comforts you. If we can say it this way, women, you're to be like the Holy Spirit. And sometimes in my own life, I'm thankful not only for the Holy Spirit, but for my wife because it seems like I have two Holy Spirits. In a good way. Because they're picking up some things like, let me save you from this. Because you're only thinking on one side of the brain. Have you thought of this? I love you, and I don't want to see you run into a ditch. Okay? So being identified as a helper is not a demeaning thing. Do you understand that? Being a helper is not a demeaning thing. In other words, when God created a woman, he he created a person who would help the man in a way that he would help him. So ladies, those of you who are married... When it comes to uh, spiritual and emotional health of your husband, w- would you say that you're a helper in that? In his emotional and his spiritual state, are you a helper? Are you a helper? For example, uh, do you encourage him or do you demean him? In other words, do you speak life into him? For me, I, I love it uh, when people encourage me. I, I'm very excited, and I, I understand that, that, that that's a good thing. We all need a pat on the back and so forth. Some people say, you, never, you don't ever need that. Listen, we all need it, okay? We all need encouragement and stuff. And people can encourage me, but my, if my wife ever encourages me or says, hey, honey, you look good, or that was a great message, I'm good. I am good. I'm good. Now, the opposite of encouragement uh, we, is contentions, contention, or we could say the opposite of encouragement is quarrel, being quarrelsome. And we can see this in Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 9 that says, It is better to, be, to live alone in the corner of an attic than with a quarrelsome wife in a loving home. Then in Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 19, it says it's better to live alone in the desert than with a quarrelsome, complaining wife. Then in Proverbs 27 and verse 15, it says a quarrelsome wife is as annoying as a constant dripping on a rainy day. Some people say, some some scriptures say a, a dripping faucet. Verse 16 says, stopping her complaints is like trying to stop the wind or trying to hold something with greasy hands. 
the only reason why I'm reading this is to show that there is a difference between encouragement and, and complaining or quarrelsome. And then there's, a, there's this issue called trust. Because a good helper is someone that you can trust. A good helper is somebody you can trust. So, if, for example, ladies, can your husband be, emotion, can, can be open about his emotions without you demeaning him or holding it against him? How many here last week? Raise your hand if you are here last week. Be proud. What did Robert Morris say in that video? He said, ladies, can your husband share with you some of his deepest struggles without you demeaning him or holding it against him? And then he followed it up with this. As a married couple, you're to struggle together. Not say, well, you need to get this over, buddy, or take it personal like he doesn't love you anymore because he's struggling. He just, we all have our struggles. We are to be helpers, specifically wives, you're to help him to grow emotionally and spiritually. Amen? Not demean him, and when he shares something, hold it over him and say, see, you, I told you you would never change. Is that helping? No, if you're going to be like God, you, you call those things that be not as though they were, and you begin to speak faith over him. You continue to say, that's not you. That's not who God created you. Okay? And, and so uh, don't use that against him. And so number one, a woman is a helper. Number two, a, a woman is, a, a, is uniquely designed by God. A woman is uniquely designed by God. And the reason I say this is because women don't feel beautiful. If I was to ask... Every woman in this place, even though you're saved and a Christian, many of you struggle with an identity that you're not pretty enough, you you don't look like so-and-so, and and you're you're in this comparison game, and you don't feel beautiful. And I'll tell you, I can prove it because I watch watch your Facebook posts, I watch different things, and some, some ladies, I realize that they don't think they're beautiful enough because they're filtered to the nth degree, and I'm going, that's not you. You filtered yourself so much. That if somebody was to meet you in person, that picture does not look like you. Because you're filtered. Because, why are you filtering things? Because you're not comfortable in your own skin. You don't know who you are. You don't realize that God created you uniquely for a, a, a time and a place and, and that you're special to God. Look at this next scripture in, in uh, Genesis chapter 2 and verse 21. Before I do that, ladies, I want you to say, guys, just kind of sit, you know, sit quietly, but I, ladies, I want you to say this with me. Are you ready, ladies? I'm beautiful. Say it again. One more time. You are beautiful. Can I tell you, it didn't get loud in here because many of you don't think you're beautiful. And so you hesitate. Even when I said it, you, you know, you, deep down inside, you know you are, but it's hard to say it because there's so... There's so much manure of the world and other people's opinion and other, even stuff that you got when you were a, a, a young girl that people have put on you that it's hard to believe what God has placed on you. You are beautiful just the way you are. Amen? All right, now let's read this. Okay, Genesis 2, 21. So the Lord caused God, uh, the, the, the Lord God caused the man to fall into deep sleep. I just thought that ain't hard. Just put him on his lazy boy and let him watch NASCAR. (laughs) He's out. (laughs) While while the man slept, the Lord God took out one of the man's ribs and closed closed up the opening. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib, and he brought her to the man. Now notice, God created the, the woman, but it never tells us how long after he created the woman before he presented the woman to the man. Think about that. Keep that on the screen just for a quick second so they can see this. He created the woman, then he brought her to the man. But it doesn't say how long before. It could have been a week. could have been a month. He created, right? Okay, now here's just a thought. I wonder how much time God spent with the woman and talked to her and explained to her his purpose for her life. Like, hey, Eve, before I, before, yeah, and she didn't have Eve. Um, she just, hey, this is who you are. You are a helper. I've uniquely designed you to be different than any other creature. I want you to understand that, that you are, 
You are created to be a helper. You're to be unique. I put a lot of my attributes in you. I wonder how long that the father spent time with his daughter before he presented the daughter to his son. I wonder what that conversation looked like. I'm going someplace with this because many people don't spend enough time with God to find out who they really are. And what they're doing is they're getting in all these impulses and all these other signals to tell them who they are, which, are, which is not right. And God is the one that will tell us who we are and who he created. See, I'm not, I'm not a, just a man. I'm not just a pastor. I'm not just a husband. I'm just not a father. You know who I am because I spent time with God. He says, I'm a unifier. I'm a unifier. That's my, that's my purpose in life, to unify people, to unify the body of Christ. I'm getting goosebumps talking about it. But here's the thing. Do you know who you are? I'm a Christian. No, that's a tribe. That's, some, that, that, that's what you do. Who are you? Because if you find out who you are, you'll, you, you won't have any... You won't have any problem with your identity because you, know, you got your identity from God and not from somebody else. He spent time with her and explained, you're a helper, you're unique, I put my attributes in you. This is your assignment in life. He explained to her why he created her. And ladies, God wants to do the same thing for you today so that you can find your God-given identity in him And not in what other people say. So in the same way as I challenge the men on Father's Day to pursue God and spend time with him. I want to challenge every lady in this house to understand the importance of spending time with God alone so he can speak to you. I've never heard God's voice. Well, maybe you're asking the wrong question. Not, God, why did you make me this way? Why, why, did, why does my face look like this? Why does my butt look like this? Why does, it, why, why does she got prettier you know, feet than me? And How about I say, God, what do I need to know about my life? And let him begin to speak who you are. He's got a different name for you. I just heard that. I got a different name for every one of them. And it's a name that he has assigned to you. That's good. Understand this too, ladies, that Satan wants to separate you from God so he can separate you from his voice so you can start. Listen, he wants to separate you from God and separate you from God's word, from his voice. Why? Why does he want to do that? So that you can start questioning God's identity, his goodness, and his faithfulness and start questioning who he made you to be. And if he can get you away from God and you're not, listen, you're not getting your identity from, from, every, uh, from God, you're getting it from everything else. You're getting it from your own impulses. It's going to be wrong. Remember what we said earlier in, in this series, that God's ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts, meaning we have some ways and we have some thoughts that are wrong. That God wants to say, that's not who you are. Your feelings are telling you this is who you are. People are telling you this is who you are. Your physical appearance is saying this is who you are. But that's not who I created you to be. He created you to be a helper and to be unique. To give you a God-given identity. And Satan was trying to separate you from God and his voice so that you question God and you question who God created you to be. And he was successful with Eve. If you look at the story of creation in Genesis 3, where we see uh, that, that Satan got, got Eve to question the goodness of God. Let me just give you the, 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 the real quick flyby of this. Satan comes to Eve in the form of a serpent. And what does he say? Did God say you couldn't eat of that? It looks so good. You know, God's, God's really not as faithful. He's just holding back on you. Why would God put such a a desire in your heart for that tree and not let you eat it? Why would God put these battles in you? God, why did you make me this way? He didn't. Satan is trying to tell you he made you that way. If God was so good, why doesn't he just let you, if it feels good, just do everything? Because God has a unique purpose for our lives. Come on. And I, I, I walk in this, 
I walk in this very gracefully and very, you know, very under, because I, I made a statement the other day. I even questioned whether I should do it, but it really made the point. As a man, I was created to have sex with every pretty girl, but does that make it right? I mean, that's what the enemy would say. You're a man, go for it. But God says, no, I made you for one woman. And just because, and, and Satan will go, if God was so loving, why wouldn't he let you feel good? Because you're going to hurt people. That's not his plan. Come on, somebody. Can I just be a... Can I just be real with you and just kind of tell you the way, the way God really intends? And so, so, so Satan goes to, to Eve and says, if God was so good, why did he put such a, a desire in your heart for something? Well, no, you're putting the desire in it. God just said, don't eat it. Because when, when, you, when you say no to something that, that looks good and feels good, but you love God, you're going to... Every time you say no to that tree, you're saying yes to God. So I might have impulses. Guys, I, can I te- just teach? Because I know you, you're, gonna, you're leaving me here on the stage by myself, but I know every single one of you. Because men are unique, and they have certain things and qualities. And we just, I mean, we got to, we see a pretty girl, like, nope, don't look. And ladies, that's not a bad, that, that's not something he wants to do. That's just the way he was created. But every time he goes, don't look. It's not because he loves his wife, but because he loves God. And because he loves God, he loves his wife. And let me say, help you guys. The thing you resist will grow weaker. The things you accept will grow stronger. That's why we need to take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. So what, when, you, when you get that impulse, it's not sin. It's what, whether you take that one long look. Like, nope. nope. That's when you, every time you say, nope, you're saying, I love God. And because I love God, I love my wife, and I love my kids, I love my church, I love my family, I love my friends, I love the people that are around me. If God was so loving, why wouldn't he just like, case sera, just enjoy life, everything, you know, that will be, will be? God says, that's not the way I created it. Amen? So, ladies, let me, let me go back to this. Saint tries to pull, pull us away from God and his, and his voice, so we begin to question God, but we also begin to question our own identity. Can you imagine what Eve was dealing with? Not only was he attacking God's identity, but he began to attack her identity. Well, I guess I'm not good enough for God. Because, you know, the fruit does look good. Why is he holding this back from me? Why, why is he telling me No. I must not, he must not love me as much as he says he loves me. See how I must not be as lovable to God. So he got Eve to doubt God and his attributes and her own qualities and attributes. And isn't that what's going on in this world? Attacking a woman, what, to question God and his design and his purpose And question her identity that she's not good enough. So now she has to change or be something totally different. Okay? Now, ladies, what you need to know is that God is pursuing you. And he'll never separate himself from you. You know, after Eve, Adam and Eve both separated from God. The first thing that happened, they got in fear. I'm not good enough. When God came and pursued them. He said, where are you? What did they say? We're here. Well, where? where? We're over here. Well, what are you doing over there? We were fearful. The moment you leave your God-given identity, you become fearful, and then you try to put on a different set of identity than God gave you. This ain't in the notes, ladies. Some of you putting on fig leaves, trying to be something you never were called to be. And you know what else he said? You know what else God said? I I love this part. He said, who's been talking to you? Who told you? Who told you to be afraid? Who told you you weren't good enough? Who told you I didn't love you? 
Who, who questioned my goodness to you? And even at even the time where they separated from God, God still pursued them. And he said, I'm still faithful. I'm going to make a way where it seems to be no way. I'm going to continue to pursue you because I love you. Even when you make a mistake. That's why Romans 8 in verse 35 says, what can separate us from the love of God? We can separate ourselves from the love of God, but God's love toward us is never failing. He's always pursuing us. Again, what you need to know is that God is pursuing you, and he wants to spend time with you. And also, ladies, if you'll spend time with him, you'll be equipped to encourage your husband and help him from making poor decisions. Meaning you'll be a blessing. Why? Because the third point here is is a woman is a blessing from God. A woman is a blessing from God. And if that's true, ladies, if your husband were to pray to God, listen to me, if your husbands were to pray to God, would they say about you, God, thank you, or would they say, God, why me? Okay, for the sake of time, I've got to skip some things. Did you get something so far? All right. Yeah, give God some praise. I'm going to jump to the bottom here, guys, because I don't have time. I want to recap. Number one, ladies, you are a helper. You are unique and created by God, and you're to be a blessing. Okay? And now in knowing this, I want to talk to the men in this church. If you're not a part of this church, this is a family time right here, okay? I want to talk to the men. Men, I believe that we have an obligation to be a blessing to our wives and our children, more specifically to our daughters. Therefore, men, I want to give you an opportunity this morning. And this is what I want. This is what I see in my my heart and my head. Men, we do not bless our wives enough. We don't speak over them. We don't speak over our daughters to give them the identity that they need that God has for them. And we have an obligation to speak over them and tell them who they really are. So this morning, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask, in a minute, I'm going to ask everybody to stand up. And if you're a husband or a father right now and you have your wife and your children with you, I'm going to give you a moment to, I don't want you to pray first, I want you to speak blessing over her. And then speak blessing over your daughter or daughters and then I want you to pray for them. Are, you, are, are we good? Do we understand the, the assignment? Here's why we're doing it in church. Because if we go home, you're probably not going to do it. So lock the doors. <laughs> this may even be uncomfortable for the men. But you need to do it. Okay, now if you all would just stand up for a quick second. Those of you that I picked out out of the congregation, will you come forward please? Now, Keith and Lori, uh, um, you come up, but I want your daughter to come up with you because that's going to be part of the first. Come on up. Hurry up. Hurry along. Hurry along. Okay. Why did I call these folks up? Because, number one, they are going to pray over. They're going to they're gonna bless their wives and their daughter. Okay. And then the men are going to pray over their wife and daughter. And while they're doing that, I want you to do that too. But here's, here's, here's the thing. I know there are people here, you don't have a husband. And you don't have a, you don't have a dad in this house. I'm going to welcome you, if you don't have a husband or a father in this house, to come up and let these folks bless you and pray for you. Are you ready? On the count of three. Are you ready? Husbands, get to work. One, two, three. Speak blessing over them and pray for them. Come on. There you go. Come on. Watch what God does. Come on. Some of you aren't moving. If you do not have a husband or a father here, I want you to start moving your way. Let them have their time, but then they're going to turn around and they're going to be a blessing to you. Come on. Hey, why not feel better when you leave church? than what you came in. Amen? Come on. Come on. Be good. Thank you, Aiden. Thank you. Bless your wife. 
pray for her. parent or a grandfather. I see that. Grandpa, speak blessing over your granddaughter. Pray for her. Come on. Come on. This is a beautiful thing. All right, Keith and Lori, you want to start getting some folks here. Amy, Amy, come on over here. We need some ushers kind of direct some traffic up here. We got people up here. There's ladies in here. Come on. I know. Come on. Come on. Up. Don't, don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. If your dad's not here or your husband's not here, maybe he's home. Still come up. You need to, you need to receive a blessing. You need to be prayed for. Come on. pray for some of these people that need prayer just so I can we can keep moving here come on all over over to this side speak blessing and pray for them just seems to be a, a heavy load over on this side so have Jerry and Colleen you want to come up here just speak whatever God puts on your heart guys good? Can you kind of slide in here and pray for Stephen you want to bring? Come on. You're blessed. You're highly favored. You're blessed coming in and blessed going out. Dan and Bobby Joe you want to slide in here? Stephen, if you got some more people, bring them over to Bobby, Joe, and Dan. There you go. And their children, and their children, and their children, may his favor be upon you, and a thousand there you go. generations, and your family. Children and their children, may his favor be upon you in a thousand generations, and his family and your children and their children and their children, may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you, all around you and within you. He is with. thought if I was to ask you who are you some people will say I'm a child of God and that's good but there's more and I want you to I want to challenge you this week is to spend time with God and ask him God who am I you know who Moses was Moses was deliverer he was the deliverer that's what his calling that's who he was he was the man of God to bring deliverance like I shared with you, God has spoken over me and said, you're, uni you're a unifier. I've called you to unify. Bring people together. But do you have that word from God? Not something you're picking out of the sky. I think this will be good. 
but something God just spoke over you and said, this is who you are. And I think too, too much of our prayer time is, God, why, 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 why this, why that? God's saying, how about just asking God, God, what do I need to know? What do I need to know about this situation? What do I need to know? And then, God, when, once you reveal what I need to know, what do you want me to do? Not what religion says I have to do. Not what somebody else says I have. What do you want me to do? And when you're, listen, when we do that, when we go to God with just that open, pure heart, and we say, God, what do you want me to know? And what do you want me to do? You are acting just like Jesus, which is what we call Christ likeness in this house. Because here's what Jesus said I only do what I see my Father doing, and I only say what I hear my Father saying. That we need to hear what God is saying. We need to see what He's doing in our lives. What did He call us to do? And I believe that if we'll walk in that truth, not only will you be filled with joy and peace and all the things that God has for you, but this church is going to go to a new level because people in this house will know who they are. You're not just a Christian, you're just not a child of God. You are unique uniquely designed by God to accomplish a specific purpose for his kingdom. Amen? God is good. We're almost done here. I think everybody good? How many glad you came to church today? Isn't that awesome? Give God some praise if you're happy. We used to sing a we used to sing a song. They clap in church. Yeah, we used to sing a song in the Luther church. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. And I'm like, all right, that's cool. That's cool. Well, let me bless you before we go. We'll get you out of here. Hey, um, take what God has given you and uh, plant it in your heart and let it just let it just germinate and just be all that God had created you to be. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you, be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In Jesus' name. Hey, life in Christ, I'm proud of you. I love you. God loves you. Love each other as you go. We'll see you.